the greatest interviewer of all time. Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you, especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always, always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm gonna come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now, just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs> Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan, you and I are gonna take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it. Dan Allen, you and I are going dark now. Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. <laughs> Tune into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. I've been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belts? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Allen. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, Outlaws for Life, partner. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat babies! Everybody knows that! Welcome everybody, today we have my man Kev coming on the show, he is, oh that's fucking hot, he is Alexander from Elden Ring, it's going to be a nice little stealth interview today, not much preparation, not much um, publicity, we're just going to sneak this one in and see how we go, you know, we did a lot of Elden Ring interviews uh over the last couple of months but we haven't done one in a while the last one we did was what was the last one we did it was with um jonathan jonathan who plays no it was gideon offney uh joe mcgahn so that was the last one we did two months ago so it has been a while since we did an elden ring um, video, but I really wanted to do this one with uh, Kev because Alexander was one of my favorite characters in the game, and um, we're gonna have a nice little turnout today. If you've got any questions, now's the time because you're gonna get you're gonna be able to get them in. Um, I'm gonna be reading out some Reddit ones as well, and we're gonna have a little fun time here, and then I'm gonna go get some sleep straight after because it's one of those nights you know what i mean dog boy how are you brother 
Great to see you in here. T.W. Lauren Miguel. Alexander's Quest made me tear up. What part? I'm just trying to remember. I, I, I obviously watched a little bit in preparation for the interview, but I, I'm trying to remember what part exactly would have made you tear up. What am I missing there? I love just the first interaction you have with a character, which is, you know, he says something along the lines of, I'm stuck, can you hit me in the rear with something big? And it's like, hold on, what did you just say? <laughs> it just sounds so funny. And uh, obviously, guys, we've got a lot of interviews to come. So we've got, uh, I don't know if you guys know Young Year and Skill Up. Those two guys are coming on. We've got Sissy Jones. We've got um, possibly Handsome Jack, Borderlands 2. And plenty more to come. The part where he asked to fight. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, guys, Kevin's in. Let's uh, enjoy this one. Any questions, leave them in the chat, and I'll be um, definitely looking. Now is the perfect opportunity for you guys to get plenty of questions in, and maybe um, he can do the voice for you as well, guys. So enjoy. Kevin, can, can you, you hear, me? hear oh. me, mate? I can hear you, brother. How are you? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Uh, I'm just wondering if I should be leaving computer audio or just leave it on. Hang on a minute. If I leave... Oh, you're gone now. And I can't see you as well. <laughs> Guys, bear with us here. Technical difficulties. We are live, by the way, Kev, but that's all good. I've, um... oh. I got you. Got you. Got me now. Yeah, I can see you and I can hear you real well. How you doing, Dan? Good. The only thing now is we can't see you. Oh, got it. Okay, shit. <laughs> Start the video. Hey, there we go. Hey, Kev. How are you, mate? How you doing? We got mate? you. We got you. Very well, man. Let me just get the view right. Gallery. There we go. We're cooking gas. Thank you for coming on, man. And um, I know it's oh, pretty late. Listen, apologies. Uh, I. I was so, I've been all over the shop and I've been running around. It's been crazy and and my wife's been really busy and it's all been a bit crazy mad. So I'm sorry I, it's been so long since we first hit contact. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's all good, man. It's, I'm glad we, we got it out of the way. And um, yeah. Yeah, man. How have you been, by the way, before we get into things? Um, I know you've been busy, but uh, tell us, what's a, what's a day in the life of Kev Dog? <laughs> day that I thought Gab dog. Um, well, I'm running, I'm, my voiceover work, you know, which is kind of like the kind of premise, if you like, of why we're chatting because of the computer games and the characters I've played is like, there's, I, I'm so busy that at times that it almost turns into a bit of a blur where I, mm. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know who I'm playing and what I'm playing and who I'm voicing and who I'm not voicing or not, as the case may be. And, uh, and when I'm not doing that, you know, I try and get out into the bit more of the countryside and go for some runs and get out and get some air, get some mental health. You know, they're like, just get out of the urban environment. Yeah. And I love doing that. And uh, uh, my wife's really busy. Well, she, my wife's a human rights lawyer, so she's kind of like crazy too and running about. So it's all a bit mad. But since the since the... COVID kicked in and we had all everyone's been working from home. I see her more often because <laughs> she kind of likes working from home. So, that's cool. <laughs> so um, and it's worked out really well. We, 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 uh, we're a good team and we get on like a house on fire. So we have a real blast and we have some laughs and then seeing friends and hanging out. Yeah. So you're Don't not, long... um, you're not kicking back and playing a bit Elden Ring in your spare time. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to tell. Okay, Dan, this is. I'm going to tell you something now. It's probably going to. You're going to go. You're joking, man. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, I am. I'm not. A, I'm not a gamer. You know, I don't. I don't play any of these games. But saying that, I don't. I'm not, I'm, I caveat that as well because in all the games I've worked on, I've never. I, I don't think I've ever seen any of them. I've never actually seen any of them being played or worked on, you know, or, or you know, I, I see them when I'm where I, sometimes they show me images in the studio and I can see my character, 
and you know what it's like when you're doing the voice work on this stuff it's it's very early doors yeah usually yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's still being created background needs to be done sometimes there are games i've worked on where there's nothing they've literally just got cartoon cutouts and cardboard transfers and you're saying okay so what am i hanging on here i don't know what <laughs> and you go in and there's there's loads of dialogue and you and you do bits of dialogue and then they say oh yeah yeah wait a minute Kev, that he's kind of jumping over a bridge there and he's uh, on a bit on fire and you go all oh, right well you could have told me that one before i did it yeah but elden ring i went into the studio i went into liquid violet and uh, we had a bit of a bash we had a bit of a party which was great and a lot of the crew were there and the Liquid Violet gang who are just brilliant. And uh, a few of the actors who worked on it as well. I know they're my good friends too. And I'm, we had a, a good evening. And then they took us into a room and showed us the game. Mm. And that's the first I'd actually seen the game in real sort of full on. And I must say, when I saw Elden Ring, I thought, holy cow. You know, I like I, this. I thought... My God, if you weren't to get this, would make you want to be a gamer just to sort of like get into it and you know really play this thing. I mean, mm. it's just extraordinary, extraordinary graphics, extraordinary ideas. And um, somebody was in the room and they even said, Oh, this is like the Shakespeare of games. <laughs> so it's the, <laughs> a new level of like the Shakespeare of games. And I didn't know what he was. Oh, I, I kind of got a little bit of that though, because there were so many levels of. Mm workability with this thing on the screen and how you play the game i mean it was baffling to me you know i'm i'm, I'm too old school i'm old school and so i'm not <laughs> in, i'm not in the kind of, i'm not in the kind of like zone with some of these cats <laughs> who play these games so i'm like you know what the fuck is going on <laughs> so you didn't pick the controller up right? there are some games i've seen done i swear i'm going yeah. like who, somebody's dropping acid <laughs> <laughs> well, so me, somebody's devising this stuff in a haze of. You know, me like, too, mate. Me too, and I and I play them for a living. But did you did you actually pick up the controller at all? Or are you like, no, I'll leave this to the experts. No, no, I left these two cats. They were sitting there and they were showing us how it worked. And yeah, showing them. They they particularly wanted to show me my character. You know, I did again. I didn't realize that my my character Alexander this jar this sort of warrior jar character in elden ring yeah. had become such a hit i mean just like i didn't know anything about it and really so like, well, your character's really everyone keeps everyone's going online and they're talking about it and i said all oh, right great well listen you know all i want to do is go in and do a great job and as best i can and really create a character rather than just a kind of monotone sort of cypher mm. you know you don't mm. want any of that you want to you want you you try to sort of uh breathe some life into this created visual it's kind of fascinating really it's, it's mad so you did see some of your work as alexander yeah he did show yeah you. and what, yeah. what was your reaction yeah i was thinking <laughs> you always said i was thinking hmm did I did I choose? I mean, they loved what I did with the voice and everything. But I was, you know, you're always a little self-critical. And I thought, God, did I choose the right voice for this? <laughs> um, I mean, in, in all honesty, Dan, you know, you see these things. You can choose so many different voices you could do for any of these characters, you know. Yeah. And it would still come over well. It would yeah. be a little bit like, you know, it's a little bit like a movie. You see one actor play a character in a film, but if they had never got that part and it was another actor, you would just take it as read that that's what it was. And that's what it is. It's just that when I did the test and I was mucking around with this character with the voice, they, they really loved what I liked. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the dudes over in Japan, they were like, yeah, hopping mad about it and say, Oh yeah, we love that. Kevin, we love the, what you're doing with them. You know, okay. You know, let's, let's roll with that then. <laughs> and so then once you know where you're at and you get in the groove, you can have some fun with it then a little mm. bit, you know, you can have a bit of fun with the dialogue and, you know. It sounded like it. you had so much fun in the yeah, booth for this it one because it, it really came across to me, but also the nuances with the performance. I just, I really love the character. The first sort of meeting I had with him, um, you were saying, what were you saying? You were like, give me a smack from behind with something big, it's like, wow, okay. 
Imagine reading yeah. that in the booth. What are you thinking? You're a jar, obviously, and you we say, are, "Well, we're obviously <laughs> the connot- the connotations of those lines." Yeah, I know. Yeah, and the sort of you know the innuendo. Yeah, we were cracking up. I was cracking up. I mean, that's my type of. I mean, I'm I'm like that anyway in life. You know, I will jump on anything where I think, oh, but that is, you know, and make yeah. some joke out of it all, and it's funny, and you just go straight in with the gag, and yeah, yeah we were really laughing about that. <laughs> I remember. I think I turned around. I think Adam was. I said, you know, is this for kids? Is this for kids? <laughs> you know, yeah. Let's smack this guy from behind with something big. <laughs> hey ho. <laughs> they must they, they must have known yeah, what they were doing. It's just going to be shown in some little tiny cinema around the back <laughs> with guys with raincoats, you know, uh, with the buttons. Yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, you, you're literally, you're playing a warrior jar, as you say, and then you, you got one. Of, I don't know, if, was that one of your first dialogue pieces you recorded or was that later on? Do you remember that? Because if that was your first piece of recording, you'd have to think, oh, what have I got? Lines. Yeah, you'd have to think, what did I get myself into here? <laughs> You know, uh, no. Uh, look, the one thing that we knew from the off was, you know, this was this was going to be big. This was going to be a really special game, mm. you know, because of the people involved in it. You know, George R. R. Martin writing the story. You know, and I'd done. I'd already. I I worked on all of the episodes of Game of Thrones. You know, playing different vocal characters in the background and doing laser loads of um, ADR. ADR, and, yeah. Yeah, in the background, did uh, every single episode. In fact, I think apart from the first season of Game of Thrones, I worked on every single one. Wow, really? So I kind of, knew, we, you know, we knew that George, and I saw the documentary about George R. R. Martin, and when I saw that he was the guy that had, he'd written this game, and mm. and the Japanese guy whose name I'm not even going to try. Miyazaki, yeah. Yeah, Miyazaki is the sort of, you know, Spielberg of games making kind of dude. You know, he's yeah. up there. Mm. You go, okay, well, this is clearly going to be pretty huge. Yeah. Otherwise, why would these guys be involved in it? You know what? So I we knew we were, we all knew we were working on something big and something special. But of course, at that time, at that moment, we did we weren't being able to see any of the visuals at all. It was just, you know, like I said, like hand-drawn images of what the characters sort of looked like. Mm. I did some other voices in it. Yeah, yeah. Remember, you probably know better than I do. They yeah, seem really, you did the ancient really. Albanakis. Yeah. And Wormface One. Yeah. yeah. You tell me. I mean, I don't. I, yeah. I don't even know what they look like in the game. I saw little images of it, and I thought, okay, I can do some stuff with that. And I gave them a different, totally different from oh, Alexander. Yeah. 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 Um, was it intimidating? I guess it wasn't intimidating for you working with Miyazaki Son because. You you're not really a gamer at all. You didn't really know his pedigree. So when you meet those guys from Japan, I'm sure it was it was it still daunting at all when they're over the call? No, we had really good. Oh, oh, we had some really through the translation. Yeah. We actually had some really good laughs. Really good laughs. Oh, that's they good. were when I was in the studio. I mean, they're in, they're on a screen, you know, and and screen is in gallery, and you can see everybody. You can see the whole load of them in this boardroom in Tokyo. Well, that's what I mean. I'd be a bit sort of nervous. I think. Nah, nah. nah. I know what you mean, but nah, it's, nah. And you know, you know, it's it's what you do. It's your job. Yeah. You know, yeah. you play to bigger audiences than that, and you know, when you do live theatre or you're on a film set or something and you have a particular scene where there's a lot of people listening, hanging on your every word about something. So, so it doesn't really, I mean, for me anyway, I'm not, I can't, can't speak for anyone else, but no, it doesn't. And I guess you've already booked the job. So there's no. Yeah. I'm, I'm there to do what I I just want to get it right for them. Mm. You know, and if I, if they say, um, most of the time, Actually, what I was really pleased about is that they were re- very thrilled with what I was doing, and I was pleased with that. And really, after that, it was really changing the dialogue. There was a lot of that goes on. Uh, that happens a lot. You can work on a game, and suddenly they'll go, oh, "I'm not so sure about that line. What about changing it to this and that?" And that's where we, as actors, can and voice artists, can come in and be helpful too, because we can say, well, we're so used to sort of like dialogue and, and you say, 
I think this would sound better, blah, 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 blah. Mm. And they'll, and very often you'll get them go, oh yeah, we like that. That's good. Do that, do that, say that, you know, and, and it's about changing the dialogue. So sometimes you can be in the studio for time, your time in the studio can be, um, a, there's a good, there's a good amount of that time changing dialogue. Wow. And that, and that's quite fun, but it's quite fun because then it's a, you're all collaborating in a creative process. I, I, have, I have to say, Kevin, sorry to cut you off. I've spoken to a few of the Elden Ring actors and you're, you're not the first to say that, but I feel like you might have had more collaboration than a lot of the others. Maybe that was just, maybe that was just with, the, with that character. Um, well, there was, a, there was a lot of collaboration and they liked what I was, I said, well, what about that? And maybe that line doesn't work and make, because the grammar of it, sometimes the grammar of it isn't perfect for, mm. it doesn't sound quite right or it doesn't scan or it doesn't feel right. Uh, but at the same time, there are also some place names and names of castles or the name of some area or in within the game. You can't change that stuff, yeah. No, but they like to sometimes. Sometimes oh. they'll say, oh, um, we've we just changed change that. that line a little. Yeah, we just want to change that line a bit and get the name of the place before the bit. And you go, okay, cool, you know. And that it's wow. like they're, they like to change stuff too and say, you know what, we don't like that, we like that, we like this. Yeah, interesting. So that, that's kind of fun. So tell me, was that was the process on Elden Ring any different to other games you've worked on, like, you know, Horizon or Trine or any of those games? Um, I do prefer games like Elden Ring and the ones where you'll play, you have a more, you have more rounded characters to play. I mean, I've been on, I've also been on a lot of other games mm. that are very boring and very warlike, you know, and you can spend like, you know, two hours just screaming and shouting and shouting orders across a battlefield, you know, and after a while, you know, you start to get a little shredded, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and believe me, believe me, I'll tell you, there are some seriously big, big stars who go through this as well. I remember there was, um, Gary Oldman was on a chat show once and he was talking about it because he'd literally gone to the interview after being in the studio working on some big game where he yeah. was playing the Call of Duty, Russian yeah, general or whatever it was, yeah. and you know he was shouting orders all day. And I, when he was saying, it, I thought, "Hey, gal, you know, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you've just been through for two hours." I think that was his last game too. Maybe he yeah, rubbed off on me yeah, the wrong way. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't blame him because yeah. there are some that are real you know, real kind of exhaustive and exhausting games to work on. I think I was, I was it Troy I worked on and uh, there was one game, Warhammer. Warhammer. I can imagine title. Warhammer is a lot of, a lot of battle stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, and, and sometimes on these battlefields and in the games, they just want single lines of this and single line reactions and then deaths and this and that and the other. And you sort of, after a little while, you can lose sight of who you were playing. Like, yeah. who am I? You go, well, who the hell am I? Remind me who I was again. You know, who was this dude? I can't remember. <laughs> what did he look like? You know, but I love it when you can get, I love it when you get to play those very rounded characters who have a journey. Mm. Um, and, you know, they're, they're going, they seem, they seem to be going somewhere as far as you can go as on a journey in a game. I mean, I don't, you know, like I said, yeah. I'm not a game, so I don't know, you know, how that, how, how that goes. There was one game, there was one I did and I'm trying to remember the name of it. The Wolf, the Wolf, Wolf Among Us, man. That was a brilliant role you had on that. Yeah, that Wolf was great. Among Us. I played, I was the only one in it who was British. Everybody else in it was American. They'd, they'd got loads of people in LA doing this game. Georgie Porgy, um, yeah. Georgie Porgy. Yeah. But what I loved about playing him was that he really did go on this sort of journey and he had this death scene and everything. And then the next thing, I thought nothing of it. I'm just doing this and acting this role out in a studio in front of a microphone. And again, like Alexander, suddenly I hear on the grapevine that, oh man, people are going on about this death scene there were some people that didn't want him to die you know and they wanted wanted him to, they didn't want him to they didn't want him to be killed off <laughs> oh, well so it's incredible how people get into this 
into these mm. games in that way. And I think one of the bigger joy of being in a, in a computer game and doing the voices of these characters is if you can play someone that moves the audience or makes them feel this and they, you they go on that journey with you, then that feels better than just, you know, some sort of cipher in a game where you're just, you know, popping out lines that are almost, you know, automaton style stuff, robotic or, you know, you might be even doing a robot or something, but mm. I always like to give my characters a life and a three dimensional life, you know, and mm. it's like, if I'm playing a bad guy on film, you know, I mean, I've played a lot of bad guys and a lot of kind of head cases and psychopaths and, people who are not quite the ticket, you know, they're a bit twisted. <laughs> but well, I always think, okay, I'm going to dig deep here to find out, okay, well, you know, they once had a mother. I was going to say, do you approach them as villains? Someone. Yeah. <laughs> do you approach them as villains or do you go at it a different way? Well, I always look at, you know, what you mean on film or in, yeah, a, game. in, a, in a film. Um, well, you've got a script and there are obvious relationships throughout that film and through the script but i always look for the what i call the super objective you know what is the super objective of this character what does he really want where is he heading and all the other mini objectives in between are just hurdles that they have to jump throughout the story whatever they may be whether that's an internal thing that they're going through or whether it's something that they want from someone else mm. But in the end, there is a super objective within any kind of storyline of what your character is wanting and where they're going. And I look for that. And I, you know, you have to look in between the dialogue as well. What's going on in between the dialogue, the thought processes? And those are the little kind of golden threads, if you like, that embellish your character. You know, the silences. There's more said in silences than there is with words. Yeah, uh, that's what I sort of like with Elden Ring. Um, they it was a bit more soft spoken the game overall tonally, and yeah. they sort of let things breathe. I felt like yeah. with the dialogue, yeah, which created this mood. Guys, and the other guys and the other guys you've interviewed on the, about it. Oh, yeah, I saw some of them to check out how they they've all done an amazing job, it's a cracking job. Oh yeah, brilliant. Uh, by the way, um, Lauren in here says, Kevin, you're so handsome. Who? Who's L that? Lauren. So we got we're, we're live streaming at the moment. So there's people Are you live streaming. Yeah, there's people watching Ooh. live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for telling me, Dan. Oh, sorry. I should have told you. Um, no, that's okay. We're uh, live streaming today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um Kisma well, here you, says, man. Hi Kevin, thank you for being here. Great performance. Um, my question, what kind of method acting technique do you have to get into the mindset of a big giant pot? <laughs> you make it, uh, kiss yeah, me, you I make it sound. Kitchen. I lived in my kitchen for months on a shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you no, really got into character. Yeah. No, I... Um... <laughs> You don't look at him as a pot, do you? You look at him as a yeah, as a human, sort of. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't look at him as a pot either. Now. It's just sort of an exterior, but you know. Yeah, I mean that's where it's kind of weird in comparison to playing a character in a film or yeah, in a in on TV or on stage or whatever. Is that you're. You just have to hope that your voice and the quality of what you're doing with your voice for this character suits suits the games making people that they love what you do. So when they hire you, so straight away you've nailed it if they've hired you. So you know what you want to do. Then you just have to hope that all their computer generated imagery, what they do with your character suits the voice as well, the way that character might move or stretch itself or yawn or you know because obviously yeah. on a computer game the limitations are whatever they can do with cgi with the movements and i mean obviously it's incredible now you know you can see some games and they're almost like movies you know in fact i actually was about a couple of before actually about three years ago now it's about three years ago now 
I was asked to have some photographs taken of me by some computer uh, company and they came back and said, oh, we love Kevin's look for this guy. Yeah, we want him to be this bad guy in this big game. But they wouldn't tell me what the game was called. I sneakily found out that WB, Warner Brothers, were behind it somewhere around this. So it was big money involved in this game. It was going to be huge. And they wanted my image to be the image of the bad guy in this film, in this, sorry, in this computer game. But not, but your, not your voice, just face? Well, I didn't offer up my voice, although I said afterwards, do you want me to do the voice? And they said, well, it's an American-based game. And I said, well, I can do American. Do you want me to do American and make an American character? Uh, but I never, I don't know what happened after that because then COVID hit. And then I thought, well, maybe it's going to take ages for this thing to get together now. So I just kind of didn't really think about it anymore after that. But it's possible that there is a game that still isn't finished yet because I know they take years to... There's a few WB it. games on the horizon, yeah. Okay, well, at the time, all I know, I hope I'm not spilling any beans with an NDA here. Um, <laughs> no, 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 you've been, you haven't said anything. You haven't really said anything, so don't worry. No, I haven't said yeah. anything, but I do remember that they mentioned that this bad guy was in the script then. It's probably changed. It, scripts change. Mm. They said his name was going to be Oliver. Oh, okay. The bad guy was going to be called Oliver, and I don't know. But I sat in a booth, you know, with dots on my face. And oh, so you did everything, right? Yeah, 92 still cameras taking. Oh, you've smile, done that. Yeah, grimace. wow. Yeah, smile, gr frown, you know, grimace, be rage, be angry, be this, be that. So you go through all this gamut of facial emotions for them. So then they take your face and they put it on whatever it is and away they go. But I still haven't heard a thing, and I don't know what game that is, and I haven't got a clue. Don't so, know. But they, they could, they do have the rights to your face, so they could use it in this game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I guess, you know, well, I mean, it would be a, a waste of time and money if they didn't. <laughs> I mean, if yeah. they hadn't, they, if they didn't do that now. I think, well, what the hell All right, I'll keep about? a lookout for you, Kev, and then. Well, you're a yeah, listen, Dan, if you're a Dan, Dan. So good they named him twice. <laughs> um, listen, Dan, yeah, if you hear it, look, I don't, like I said, and maybe it's heresy with your fan base and all your people that you're online with and streaming that I say I'm not a gamer. No, 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 no. My, only one Elden Ring member has played the game. Only one person I've interviewed has actually played the game. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was Sean Dooley, if you know him. Oh, Sean yeah. Dooley. He's, yeah, he's yeah, a big yeah. gamer, yeah. But everyone yeah, well, else, yeah. Well, as, as an actor, he's doing really good. Yeah, good work. He's working a lot. Yeah, he's a busy boy. I'll um, I'll have to email you if I do see your face pop up in one of these WB games. Um, I don't. Well, because I, yeah. I mean, I said I'd love to do the voice. I mean, I was a little peeved about that, really, to be honest. I'm thinking, well, if there's some image on a computer game and it's me, I would have preferred it if it had been my voice coming out of the guy. Mm. He's a bad guy. Why can't he be English? I mean, English. We always made a bad. Best what's <laughs> what's yeah what's interesting is um there are some games that all use what you said do the face stuff but they'll get models to get the face and then they'll get professional voice actors to come in but for you is interesting because you are a professional in all yeah. facets so why wouldn't you just yeah. get you for everything which i find bizarre because you probably would have done the motion capture as well. Like you, you might have done the performer. I, I didn't do any. Or the only thing I did was the facial motion yeah. capture. I didn't. I didn't do any body physical. But things, if so they were have... to have hired you, you probably would have had to do the performance capture. Is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Well, if anybody just happens to be listening in who's connected with this secretive game, then you know, get in touch with me because I'd still like to be involved if they still want me to be. Well, everything about this bad guy it's their loss i tell you i'd be oh bless you man. <laughs> no that's interesting i know they've got um a couple of superhero games wonder woman suicide squad wow. yeah I, I, it could be anything i'll keep an eye out and um if i see a, if i see that handsome mug um i'll let you know all right <laughs> but that is that's a very weird story actually I, i've never heard anything like that before yeah. I mean, 
I mean, I know, look, at, like on movies, you know, people can change their minds, you know, sometimes yeah. games or even films can be shelved. Yep. You know, I was also up for a big, massive Ubisoft game, which was supposed to be one of the follow-ups of Assassin's Creed. And I went in and did, I did an initial audition that they loved. Then I went in and did a really big one with all of the people from Ubisoft down the line watching me on screens. And I physically enacted the character. He was this kind of, uh, he was this uh, monk with a burnt face. And he was a oh. real, he was like a really cool character. That sounds really, cool. Yeah. He was really sinister and bad and everything. And I did the whole thing and they loved it. And then all of a sudden I heard nothing. And again, that was right just before the whole COVID thing kicked in. And then we thought, well, I don't know, maybe they shelved the idea, maybe... You know, sometimes these organizations and these massive computer games companies, they can say, no, 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 we don't want to do that anymore. We're not happy. We don't want to do that idea anymore. It was good, but no, we don't want to do it or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would have been, that actually, if I'd have got that, that would have been, and if, I don't know whether it actually happened, to be honest with you, but if it still hasn't happened, that would be a massive job because that was everything. That was face, voice, Physical was that the emotion. protagonist or the like whole thing. a villain? He was a big, he was a big character in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I know that they are working on an Assassin's Creed, but I know it's sort of. I've heard that it's in development hell, so to speak. So uh, they yeah. are going back and forth with ideas, and they don't know where to take the franchise. Is what I've heard. So maybe that is still on the cards um, behind the scenes. Well, there you go. I mean, who knows? I mean, this yeah. look, our game and all the other dudes and dudettes that you interview for whatever you know the actresses and the actors and everybody who works in film and on computer games we all know what the profession's like you know you, one minute you're up next minute you're down yeah. sometimes you're in projects that you think are going to go rocketing off and they don't yeah sometimes you're in things that you thought was going to be turn out and it doesn't turn out to be that great or whatever and and you know some things can mess get messed up because of money or lack of money or too much money or you know getting mm. wasted yeah, I mean, it's what it is, you know. Too much money reminds me of the the Lord of the Rings show that's coming out because I've seen right. some of the online chatter about that that um, show. They're just they're already going in. A lot of people are going in already thinking I'm not going to like it, and I say, okay, I'm going to wait to the first few and make my own judgment without you know. Sure. Um, it's a, it's a, well, look, those three movies. That's a hard act to follow, isn't it? Isn't it? it? Oh man. Yeah. It's like, well, there's a part of me that almost wants to go, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. I know. Is it Amazon? Cashola. Yeah, Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Bezos said he wanted to do kind of, you know, I want the biggest thing and the thing, la, 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 yeah. la. Yeah. Bought the rights to this and bought the rights to that. And he, and he go, okay, fair enough. We're, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um I mean, I've seen certain things on other productions that look pretty good that are, again, prequels and sequels and that. I've seen others that I'm working on that are just, and I'm not mentioning any names, are just awful. Oh, really? Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. Kevin. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> that does not sound no, good. I'm saying nothing. No, no. Um, yeah, shit. Okay. I won't pry. I don't want to get you in trouble. Maybe. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, by the way, did you know that Elden Ring is the highest selling game of this year? Did you know that? Wow. It's the biggest wow, selling that. game, ahead of Call of Duty as well. Which Call of Duty? I don't know if you're familiar with that game. That that series is usually um, peaking the charts, but yeah. Elden Ring. I believe has done 25 million at the moment, wow. which is a huge success for the first, you know, it's only been out for six months, I think. So, um, yeah. and you know, is it, I don't know if you know this, but the Alexander, I don't know who it is. <laughs> the, the Alex, <laughs> the Alexander quest has like millions of views on YouTube. Oh, just, wow. just all your stuff. If you ever wanted to look, oh, no. yeah, it's, all your stuff and just filled with comments like this character's so great. I love what? I have not seen a negative comment on your character, not one. 
So I just thought I'd let you know that. Um, that is, that's a really nice thing to hear, Dan. I mean, I know I did. I didn't know that it was the number one game. I mean, I knew everyone was going on a miss, and this is huge. And there are so many gamers online can't wait to see it. Before it came out, I was hearing all the stuff about because of who was involved in it, you know. Yeah. And of course, yeah, Call of Duty, Halo. I'm fully yeah. aware of these games, even though I don't play them. I, you know. Yeah, you know. And, I, and I've actually done some vocal work on Halo itself, the big TV thing that's coming out on Paramount. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah. nice. Some ADR or extra stuff? Yeah. Or, oh, nice. And different little characters in that and stuff. Oh, like that. that's great. That's coming out. But that's because I saw it advertised on buses. Yeah, season yeah. one's already out. Would that be what you? Yeah. Is that what you've done? You're probably in I, that. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, I know. I, I yeah, I did some stuff on that. So. Is that but a? Like I say, it's like I say, it turns into a blur in the end. I can't remember what I did and what I didn't do. You did? Did you? Because on your IMDb, it actually says you you're credited for Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Do you, what did you do for that movie? I think there was um, there was a particular character. It was only a little bit of dialogue. Yeah. I think the sort of um, one of the elvish characters. Right. And it's when, um, oh, what's her name with the dark hair? Liv Tyler's character. Lady, yeah, whatever her name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, it's she's meant to go to the boats and leave with the elvish people. I can't even remember which film that is. It's in the last Return one, of the King. Yeah, yeah. Return of the King, and um, there's a character that turns and they, yeah, they wasn't. Ha- I don't think they weren't happy with something. Maybe the performance or the voice that happens, you know. And you revoice characters a lot. I do it a lot, and and this guy just had a few lines uh, where he's trying to call her back and say, you know, my lady, my lady, don't, you know. Oh, so you're don't. you're not the face, but you're the voice of this guy. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Imagine being him. Yeah. <laughs> that your voice has been replaced, but you know, yeah, it does, look, it's a it, it's a it, tricky business. Yeah, it is. It is a tricky bit, but it, it is the prerogative of the filmmakers. Oh, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, obviously, stars in films, you know, it's in their contract. You know, I won't be revoiced if I da la 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 la. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, but why would you? You know, why would you revoice you know, mm. certain people? But, You're not going to revoice just, Brad Pitt. Yeah. But there, of course, but there are just incidental characters in films, and if they start, if they're filming things in Hungary or Budapest or somewhere like that, and they've got all these loads of extras and they're speaking a different language, and yet they want that character to be English, but they haven't got time to cast anyone because it's such a tiny role and they just get, oh, well, we like him. He's got a good face, blah, 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 blah. And then they think, oh, no, we need to put a voice, a different voice in him, you know, and they that's that's the producers and the directors. They're the ones that decide on that sort of thing. And then we turn up in studios and they'll say, yeah, can Kevin, can you revoice this guy? Like, okay, you know. Yeah. I do, but I've got to tell you, as an actor, you do feel for them, you know, I mean, Imagine them sitting at home, you know, and got the family around them, and they say, you know, here, here I am, here I am, you know, and then this other voice comes out, and they go, the hell is that? You know, hey, if it was you, I'd be happy. Okay, <laughs> if it was you, I'd say I got upgraded. You know, <laughs> look at but look at what I mean. Look at all the Bond films. You only have to look back at all the Bond films yeah. that were made in the sixties and the so. You know, all of those Bond girls were revoiced by yeah. specific women yeah. who never got the credit. For the mm. fact that they really revoiced this person, and yep. you know, because there's some model who are who's Italian or something, and they they don't they've got they a don't. strong Italian accent or something, you know. So they say, no, we need it to be English, or we need, and some other woman does it for them, and then they Man. don't get the kind of credit for that. For Fascinating. It, yeah, it happens, and it happens a lot. And oh, at least your your name's attached to it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I, I think it's in one of the you know one of the greatest films ever made. So, one of the greatest yeah. series. So, uh, could you please ask Kevin if he's ever heard of Dark Souls before working on Elden Ring? Dark Souls. Yeah, so that was the series that Miyazaki worked on before Elden Ring. I don't know if oh, you've right. heard of it. And is yeah. it, but it's nothing to do with Elden Ring. It's a totally separate. Story. It's just similar right? similar gameplay, but very completely oh. different. Um, story and world and all that yeah it's just the same sort of oh. gameplay 
if that makes no, sense. I'm, yeah, I'm afraid not. I don't. I uh, I did look up because I thought, is this Elden Ring like a second game? Because that can happen a lot. Where when you get hired, it's like the third installment of a whatever. Mm. You know, like an Assassin's Creed. You get Assassin's Creed, and there's one, yes. two, and three. So many different levels of it. Or you know, Call of Duty. I mean, how many times is how many Call of Duties are there? There's quite a few of those, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I think there's there's been one every year since 2003. So yeah, that's so 20, go. something like that, yeah. So you, as an actor, as a voice actor, you might get put on something to play a character and you find out, oh, that's the fifth instalment of this mm. game, you know. Um, there is one game I'm in. It's a, very, it's a much, much smaller game when, when where, as games are categorised, I play, I suppose, this morning. It's more it's of an called, indie game? It's called Trine. Trine, yeah. Trine 1, yeah. 2, and 3, and 4. Yeah, it's these normal people there they're such lovely i think they're all they're really lovely people to work for and they're really sweet and they come to the studio and, and the girls are fantastic and everything and i've played the magician amadeus in all of those games yeah that's my character so you're one of the main characters yeah yeah and, and they keep coming up with another installment and suddenly <laughs> i get asked again oh we're doing trine seven and you go oh right okay <laughs> the next minute you're in again you know it's like it yeah. keeps going, you know, like this thing. That's so, crazy because I, I remember. This character must be about a thousand years old now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be changing my voice. <laughs> it, it's weird for me because I remember playing Trine, I reckon, 12 years ago, 10 to 12 years ago. I remember yeah. playing. And you were in that. And now it's I'm. It's a more simplistic game, I guess, and a yeah. you know, different style. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just weird that I was probably in high school at the time, and now here I am talking to you. So, interesting world. There's some games, are, I mean, some of the games I've seen, you know, these games that are huge and have massive budgets. And I mean, they are just so elaborate and so oh. incredible. I mean, I, I t when I saw Elden Ring, I thought, my goodness me, this is, you know, there are some movies that aren't as good as this. It's incredible. Oh. It's unbelievable, yeah. And I'm sure they um, will be doing a sequel to this one after the success. So you might actually get the call back, yeah, Kev. Yeah. But don't I die in it? Doesn't the jar die in it? Well, yeah, thing? but you've got range. Come on. You've yeah. got other characters in you. Yeah. Don't sell you, sir. Do something else. Yeah. Maybe there's a cup. Maybe there's a cup <laughs> to go with a jug. <laughs> a huge jug. <laughs> Uh, there's got to be more jars out there for you to yeah. do the voice, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, something like <laughs> a huge salad bowl. Or something like <laughs> All right, I've got to get through some of these questions. These lovely oh, yeah, people no, have said, away. and they can ask me what they want. What's the deal? Okay, so thank you so much for the interview, Dan. They're amazing. Question for Kevin: What did he love most about Alexander? Um. Well. What I did love about, with what I did with the voice, considering he's this warrior jar and he has all these warriors and there's this whole tonology of warrior, warrior, warrior. I actually quite, I love the gentleness about him. Yeah, me too. I, I kind of felt that he was this gentle character uh, in, in, in amongst all this mayhem. <laughs> yeah, I've got a um, comment here. He was warm, charming and a true potted warrior. R.I.P. Sir Alexander. I found myself weeping at the end. Oh, wow. Well, oh, come on now. Whoa. Yeah. That's, that's, I've heard a lot of, lot of people have cried from this character. I'm, I'm dead serious. A lot of people have told me that they, um, that they cried at the end of this uh, quest. It, it, yeah. I, t I think there was a gentleness. There was also... Um, it seemed like his journey was a real toil. Mm. You know, like he was like on the like Job or someone, you know, he'd got all these things to sort of get through to get to some point. And there was a sort of sense of grief and disappointment in him as well. Mm. I, I wanted all of those little elements to come across because within the dialogue, I could see certain things. And I thought, oh, he sounds he's kind of grieving for something as well. And a, a sense of disappointment. And, uh, but also that lovely aspect of him where, you know, he knew a warrior when he saw one, you know, I loved all that, you know. Yeah, it all it all came across. Dreadful hunger. Alexander the Warrior Jar is from software's crowning achievement as a game development company. 
I want a game just about him and his law. He makes this game worth every penny and there will never be another true warrior like him. <laughs> oh, and that's fantastic. Well, from your lips to God's ears. I mean, uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be great to have just a complete game about you? <laughs> <laughs> Alexander, the trials of the jar, or was that? Yeah, oh, wow. that's amazing. That, that's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, has because Kevin? Not, sorry, is, uh, I mean, tell me. I don't know. I mean, maybe your the fans could tell me. I mean, is he? Uh, is he like a? Because there's the girl in it. She's the main character. Right? There's much bigger characters in the the central. Yeah, no, he's thing. not. He's not the main character. No. By any means, yeah. He's just a side quest, um, you know. Uh, but... He's a fab cameo. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I guess you could say that, but he's just, everyone loves the the sort of quest you go on because you see him, you might see him every five or so hours, if that makes sense. So let's just say it's yeah. a 50-hour game. You might meet yeah. up with him every five, six, seven hours. So through the journey, you're constantly being, you're seeing him. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, it's, uh, the, the comments are, are really amazing. Here's another one. Um, Darth, has Kevin had a chance to listen to Jar Barn's character? The story arc between Alexander and Jar Barn is one of the best and most emotional scenes in Elden Ring. No, but if someone sends me a link where I can watch that and I see will. that scene, I would love that. Yeah. Then I can see what they're talking. I can yeah. assess what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that if there's a cracking scene. Yeah. Um, what was the direction you were given for um, your character of such importance and uniqueness, given that he is a sentient jar? I think we touched on that a little bit. Um, but any specific direction? No, not really, because once once we'd established what the voice was going to be like mm -hmm. and they were so pleased with that, I just rolled with it really. And we just did the dialogue and did all the stuff that was needed and did the scenes and recorded everything that they needed. Yep. And then I went on another, I came back on another day. I'm trying to remember how many days I did. I, I did a few out. Then I came, I went back again because they wanted to change some of the dialogue. And so there were times when I felt like, I was, Oh, I've said this, haven't I? And then they just changed it a little bit, just small changes. Um, but I think overall, I think we've touched on that, you know, about the, there was, there was nothing very specific. I think they just let me run with the voice with the character and they had trust they in you. To, yeah. Yeah. Trusted me to sort of do that so that then they could then maneuver the jar in that, in that manner. Um, someone here asked, do you, do you still remember how to do the voice? Can we hear the voice at all? Kevin? Blimey. I don't want to put the I don't want to put the uh no, 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 no. I'm just trying to remember I'm just trying to remember some of the dialogue in the line. <sighs> God, um I could probably give you a line if you really need. Um Hello, can you hear me? Help me, I'm stuck. Hey. Oh my stars, I'm so happy oh, yeah, to see yeah. you. I'm Alexander. Hello. Yeah, hello. Can you help me? <laughs> I'm trying to remember what you did like. It's so <laughs> long ago now. I'm stuck or something. I was very, very well spoken, sort of, or a little bit quite well spoken, isn't he? If I remember rightly, yeah. Do you want me to play it for this you? This is the thing. Yeah. This is the thing. This is the crazy thing. You forget and you move on to doing something else, and you move on to doing. Yeah. And then if somebody asks me to go back and they wanted me to go back in the studio tomorrow, they'd have to play back play, in yeah. my ear what I've done to remind me. And then once I hear it, I'm away. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Can you play it? Is it, can you play? Yeah, it? I'll so play. I'll play it for you. Yeah. Um. I'll play my own video, Meeting Alexander, the Iron Fist. Okay, one second. All right. Tell me if you can hear this. Hello. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander. Can you hear that at all? Yeah. Yeah. I am Alexander. <laughs> Alexander, there's something in fist, isn't it? Something yeah, like iron the, fist. Yeah. The iron fist. <laughs> I'm on my way to the Caladriel. There was some place he was heading to. I remember that. There was yeah. fire, brimstone, and all this sort of thing. And he gets stuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Beautiful. Uh, oh, no, that's beautiful. What's your favourite jar, Kevin? <laughs> I don't my know. I don't know how you answer that one. I really What's don't. my favourite jar? Yeah, your favourite jar. Uh, I don't... Uh, yeah, yeah. What, a jar of beer? <laughs> jar of Guinness. <laughs> that might be my favourite as well, funnily enough. Jar of Guinness. Guinness, yeah. Yeah. Jar of Guinness or a jar of uh, a nice um, cool lager, yeah. <laughs> Did you know, Kevin, that you'd be one of the fan favorite characters during recording? Did the popularity surprise you? Um, yes, it did. No, it really did because I wasn't sure. I, I mean, I knew it was an individual character within the game. I didn't know how big the character was. I mean, I could tell, I, I knew I'd done a good job because when I was in the studio and the laughter from the, the guys in Tokyo and the man himself, I mean, he was loving all this stuff, you know. And I do remember at one point, and, and, and forgive me, I'm not trying to do something, but I, they uh -huh. had a, this lovely Japanese woman in London and she was translating to them. And I just cracked this joke, oh, what was it we said? Something we did. And there was one bit and Adam and the guys and all the people that were recording me in the studio, Adam, they, they were saying, oh, Kev, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And I just joked, well, yeah, I can smell BAFTAs there. It's definitely <laughs> smell BAFTAs. And the Japanese girl translated that back to the cats in Tokyo. And all I could hear was, because I can't speak Japanese, so do forgive me. But it was like, all I could hear was, you know, I I I BAFTA. <laughs> And then all I could see was this board of people like cracking up. You know, like That's we brilliant. had a real honestly, I, uh, I it was really great fun. We had a, an absolute blast recording it. It was great fun. And I loved doing it. It was great. Yeah. And it was great to be asked to go back and just change bits of dialogue. And I was, you know, you're just happy to do that to you because you want you want to get it right too. You want to get it right for them. I mean, I would even say, are you sure you're happy with that? And I'm a yeah. stickler. If you ask anybody who ever records with me, I'm a bit of a stickler. If I hear something, even if they say, that's great, we're happy with that, I will stop. I will stop them. And I will say, um, guys, can I just do one more? There's another way of saying this. Because you can get a line of dialogue and you can say it in so many different ways. Mm. And a different nuance, a different kind of feeling. So I said, can I just do that bit again? And they loved that. They go, yeah, 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 sure. We've got, you know, because it's just nothing. It's time. You know, you just do it again, do mm. it in a different way. And I love it when we have directors and people who are willing to fly with that. You know, you just, yeah, sure. Let's have another, mm. do another, do whatever you want, Kev. Do another version. Do it the way, do another way of doing it. And I would just give them so many different versions of a line. And then they will go, oh, yeah, we love that one. That's brilliant. No, oh, I love that. I love yeah, that. that's really fun when you get that and you can and you have the time to do that as well. Do you agree, Kevin, that Alexander is the most powerful character in the Elden Ring universe? <laughs> I don't know well, how you I don't know how you'd answer that. I, yeah, I know how to answer that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I don't know what the other characters are like, but I'm gonna say yeah. I'm going to say, yeah, and I'm going to say I absolutely agree with everybody. I think this guy should have his own game. I think he should go on it. <laughs> I think he should go on a massive journey. So tell me, someone like you that's done you know, lots of different things in the business, what, what's something that you um, – is there anything you aspire to, a role you aspire to have or – someone you want to work with is do you have goal do you set goals for yourself or are you sort of a guy that's just any work is good work how how do you move forward with your career at this stage i've got to tell you um i've been in this business now well since i left drama college in london i've been in this business 30 years and I honestly, I, I, there are most of the time, most of the time I feel like a hitchhiker. I feel like I'm kind of hitching through the profession of being an actor mm. in the sense in a, and it's kind of weird because I lived a bit part of my life like that at one time, you know, I just traveled around and bummed around a little bit. And I feel like that in it. And I just, 
I just sort of, I've given up sort of like being Mr. Keen and in the sense of like, oh my God, you know, God, I want to play Hamlet, you know? Uh, I just think, you know, um, I'm drifting through it and whatever comes is whatever comes. Yeah. I, I, I love getting good, great characters to play interesting roles, mm. uh, things, character, people, guys that are, there's something really interesting about them, whether that be dark or light or whatever it is, or fun. I'll tell you what I'd love to do more of. I'd love to do more comedy. Because oh, yeah. I often, I for some strange reason, I don't know why, I because of the characters and roles I've played in films and that, I'm always figured that, oh, he's the, yeah, he's bad guy. He's the, he's gonna be the psychopath killer or he's gonna be this lunacy or, or, I, I did a film called Summer Scars where I played a sort of a man who's sort of like slightly retarded. So like a boy in a man's body and a very strange character. Now I love that kind of stuff. I love it and I love playing with it. And if, if they were the only roles I ever got throughout the rest of my career, fine, that's okay with me. But I love making people laugh. I love having fun and I don't, I'd love to do more comedy and more comic things, especially on film and get more comic characters. And I mean, maybe I should, I mean, I, I love writing and maybe I should just write something for myself. I mean, I think that's the way to go these days really, because if you wait around for everybody else to put something together for you, you'd be waiting around forever. But yeah. But I think that if I, I had to de define my, I feel a little bit like a hitchhiker, so I don't worry about it anymore. Whatever's gonna come my way is gonna come my way. And if some, I do believe, I've always felt that there is a role that's coming there is a role that's coming my way. I don't know when it's gonna happen or how it's gonna come around or whatever, but I think there is one coming that's gonna be the one that suddenly I may just, may just touch wood, then have a, a sort of- In what a field? Flying, In what a, field? A flying sort of bit of a career for, for a while before I kick the bucket. <laughs> is this film, TV or games, do you think? Which one's- Oh, I think it would have to be film as, you know, visual film playing yeah. a role in a movie. But yeah. I do feel something's coming like that, that yeah. for, for me, that is going to be right in my wheelhouse, that is going to work beautifully and audiences are going to go, oh God, you know, la, 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 la. Prime time TV thing or a, yeah. or a movie, that, a movie that just makes it, but it's more likely these days to be like a TV thing. Yeah, know, something yeah. Like Something will come up on Netflix or something, and it'll be like bam, and suddenly you go, Wow, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. on Netflix actually at the moment. There's a, I did this drama documentary, ah, called The Last, The Lost Pirate Kingdom. Ah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Captain Woods Rogers in that. It's all based on the, the true history of Blackbeard and Anne Bonny and Calico Jack and all the pirates in Nassau and the Bahamas. And my guy, Captain Woods Rogers, was a guy that really lived. He was the one that went after the pirates and hunted them down. It's a documentary, but there's actors recounting the events. Is yeah, that yeah? Yeah, but you do get some of these drama documentaries where you know it's all documentary and hardly any drama. You know, yeah, but this yeah. is way way much. There's a lot more drama, and it was shot really well. Right, nice. Derek Jacobi narrates it as well. Um, do you have anything else um, coming up that you wanted to plug? Any upcoming um, projects that we should? A, yeah, I did a really beautiful short film with these French filmmakers, uh, a director called Tao Del Desplat, I think his name is Del Delpot. Uh, can't remember his name now. And the DOP Alexandre uh, Des. I think he's a can't remember his surname now. These are really cool dudes, really, really yeah. wonderful filmmakers. And it was a straight offer. They'd already done some work with an actress in southern, in the desert in southern Morocco. And when I saw the images, I thought, my goodness me, this looks like really Scott shot this. It looks that good. I mean, wow. for a short film, this Shit. is seriously, seriously cinematic. Wow. And I play this deep sea diver, an old school deep sea diver in the 1920s with the under the water. He's trapped oh, under the water. wow. That sounds and great. It's all, close up. it's all close up on the in in the helmet, oh, so it's wow. quite claustrophobic for me for the for my character. And yet the other actress, she's on a planet. She's crash landing on a planet, and they speak to each other over time. It's like they're having a conversation with each other. I, I don't want to say any more. Man, that sounds 
really great. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it, it, and it, I think the title. I think it's going to be called uh, "Fiddler's Green," which is based on a, an old sea shanty title, and that's the song that's going to be in the film. Wow! But from what I understand, there's some more. They've been they've been editing it and putting it together in Paris, in France. It's nearly finished. It's going to be finished very soon, actually. And another production company have come on board who really love it as well. So they're really pushing it. And so let's see what happens. Because I heard I heard one rumor said they're going to try and get it out for a short film Oscar. Yeah, I was going to say, are they going to push it in the circuits? I mean, let's hope so. I mean, yeah. I'd love They wanted to show me bits of it. And I said, no, no, no. I'd rather see it when it's all done and dusted and everything's done and the music's done. And so I can see it for when oh, it's Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, Fiddler's Fiddler's Green or On Fiddler's Green is the title. I think it's going to be called. Beautiful. Yeah. And any yeah. video games you're working on? Um, I tested for one the other day. I can't remember what it was called. <clears throat> but I don't know whether I, I don't know what's happening with that. Um, yeah. I tr I'm sure there's going to be more stuff on Trine. I'm I'm finishing the next instalment of Trine. Of there may be some more on that. They usually get asked to come in and do some more on it. Um, Try and five, yeah. yeah. Or is it six? I don't know how many they're oh, down the line. Okay. There. Okay. A few now. Okay. Yeah. And I'm doing some, and I'm doing some foreign dubbing as well. I'm doing some, you know, when you dub and yeah. So, so I'm working on this project soon that's been shot in Germany, and it's massive. Man, I love um, that you you've got your hand in different pies. You're just keeping it fresh, yeah. and you know, doing yeah, different I do things. A lot of that. Mm. Yeah, I do a lot of foreign dubbing. I I really quite enjoy that as well because you feel more creatively involved with the film, you know, because you are you've got a German actor or a French actor or a you know Italian actor or whatever doing their bit, but they want it in English. Mm. Netflix will say we want it in English, yeah. so you go in and then they choose your voice for a certain character in it. So yeah, you do is yeah, I'm going to be doing one of the lead characters in this big German thing. Wow! So keep an eye out. Beautiful. Yeah. And you're not on social media, are you, Kev? I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm on Facebook sort of privately. I don't really do social media. I'm not on – I don't do Instagram. I don't do Twitter. And, and you're not on I TikTok? Kinda, I kind of I like my – no, I don't do – I kind of <laughs> like my private life. You know, I always feel like, you know, with all of this stuff, you know, someone's going to be invading your home somehow, you know, <laughs> and, you know, creeping in on you. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm afraid I am a little bit old school with things like that, and no. but, and I, but on the on the other side, I know that there is a side of the business that leans very much towards that. I mean, I heard a story not long. Well, it happens a lot. It's not just one story; it happens all the time. Yeah, about two actresses that were up for a role. The casting directors really loved one particular actress, but the producers and all the direct, they went for this other one because she had more followers. And you go, yeah. well, if that's what it's all about now, then where the hell are we going? I don't know what that's all about. No, you know, my, I, don't, I, don't my, like, I don't like that. No. no, I don't like that. My dad, God bless him, you know, he's gone now. But he always said to me, he goes, look, talent in his books, talent will out. If you're talented, mm. you know, eventually it should get seen. And talented people should be the ones that get, you know, uh, this whole thing about people getting jobs because they're an influencer or, uh, you mm. know, whatever stuff like this. And you think, oh, come on. Mm. You know, what's that all about, you know? Mm. No, I, I agree. I actually agree. And technically you could call me an influencer, so. Um, yeah, I know, but but I, hate, I hate that uh, word, so, you know. Well, yeah, but, you, yeah, but you're, yeah, but I, well, you are, but you're in a different realm. You're sort of, you're talking about a particular product and games mm. that you love and you've got a following and they want to hear about your talk about it. And you talk about it on a level that's like, we're talking about this, game we're talking yeah. about this product you know, i'm not posting posting. photos of you know me in the gym and you know that's well, yeah, exactly. yeah but if yeah. Some, but if somebody gets a job an acting role in a film or a tv thing just because they happen to have been on i don't know pop idol come on give me a break right man. yeah i know what you mean you now I mean? yeah, yeah and suddenly they've got like six million followers and oh man yeah <laughs> Really, we really need to, you know. Yeah, but if the talent's not there, their their career will be on a, this spiral. You know what I mean? If if they can't hack it, eventually yeah, a lot of those they'll annoys, phase out. Yeah. Yeah, but what annoys me about it, Dan, and I hope some of your listeners agree with me, actually, is that 
there are some incredibly talented actors and actresses out there, you know, who don't get it, who don't get the role because somebody else gets it because of those reasons. Mm. Oh, because they've got three million followers. That means loads of people will come and see the movie. And I totally get that the bean counters and the money men, that's what they want because the film gets them a but uh, you know. I don't think it translates personally. Mm. Not, not all the time. Maybe with someone like Dwayne Johnson or, you know, The Rock, but I don't, I've don't. i seen plenty of people with millions of followers that their movies are bomb. Let's just say that. They bomb. Yeah. So it, it obviously, the, the work has to be quality. So, um, no, nah, everyone's agreeing with you here. Don't you worry. Good. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we're on a winner. So if I come over to... <laughs> Listen, I was just going on. All the people that are online, they're they're all over the world. They're from all over. All over the world, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Portuguese, England, Australia, United States, Canada, you name it. They're all tuning in. So, is there anything you wanted to say to the fans and and everyone listening and watching? Well, I want to thank them because we're talking about a massive amount of time zones. First of all, I want to thank you, Dan. You know, this is lovely. This has been a great chat. And I know it's really early in the morning for you. There, no, sort, no. Uh, yeah, oh, it's eight o'clock. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, all good. Yeah, it's later yeah. for you. It's like 11 there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> to, to everybody who's been listening in and throwing questions, you know, just a big hello. And thank you for all the kind comments and kind sort of things you've said about the character. And I mean, really, really lovely. I mean, actually, I went to the, um, the one thing I wish I could have got hold of, but it wasn't mine. There was, um, I went to this sort of, uh, it was like a rap party for Elden Ring. Yeah. And yeah. One of the team at Elden Ring, she's very creative. She made a model of the warrior job. Oh, and wow. And it was like this, it was big. It was, and I thought, God, I want one of them. I should have nicked it, but they've got it there at the studio. They've got it on showings. Oh. Very kind. It's very nice. It's great. I yeah. My, my friend it. has a little figurine of Alexander, actually. Yeah, so I might have to ask her where she got it. Yeah. yeah. But, but I'd love to say a big hello to America and Portugal and Canada and every, all the guys and girls out there. That and Germany speak. and Egypt. Germany, Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Wow. Yep. We're all over. Um, beautiful, Kevin. Thank you so much for, for taking the time. And, um, oh, no, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure, mate. Can, can Alexander say something to Dan before we round this one off? Is there anything you can say? Well, if you could just give me a, a good slap from behind, and, and I might be able to get loose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that's his voice. I'm going, what is that? No, no, that's it. Oh, thanks, Kevin. I appreciate that, mate. Um, best of luck with everything, mate, and hopefully we'll see you in a big WB game or a, or a big Assassin's Creed down the line, mate. That would be good. Well, I'll certainly let you know if anything like oh, that cooks along. If you see anything, about I will. No. Game, let me know because I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. We'll have a great night. I did all this work and it was hours yeah. of work. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. Send well wishes to the wife and family and um, I'll speak to you soon, mate. Thank Take you, care. You. Say bye, everyone. Blessings, blessings across the ocean, man. Stay well. You too, man. Take care. The greatest interviewer of all time, Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you. Especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always, always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm gonna come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now, just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs>
Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan, you and I are gonna take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it. Dan Allen, you and I going dark now. Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. Tune <laughs> into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. I've been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belts? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Allen. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, outlaws for life, partner. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat babies! Everybody knows that! <laughs>